anxiety. <laughs> I know it. Okay, so I, I, I joined the, the Lander Promotion Laboratory in '57, and the laboratory, oh, and they also hired four other Hungarian engineers from, from the camp. And I don't want to start to talk about them because it would take too long. Some, some, of, some of them played play, play a pretty important role in the LSTVS later on. The laboratory had about three or four American born engineers by then, and five technicians, and three captains. So the military establishment, so there were, the boss was lieutenant colonel, and there were these three captains. The fact that we had uh, technicians and a fairly good machine shop was good because we could manufacture our own, our own test equipment. And the three captains, out of the three captains, two of them played later on a very important role in the ISTBS. One was Bob Ehrlich, I Robert Ehrlich, and the other one was Ron Scotty Liston. Both of them were general secretaries of the ISTBS, but not the same time, one at a time. The laboratory, the detailed description of the laboratory appeared in the journal in volume 2, number 4, and was written by Scotty Liston. So I'm not going to go into detail, but just let me say that we had two large soybeans, fairly similar, but the professor described here, and yeah, we had problems with reworking the soil and all that. And we, of course, the Soybeans have been equipped with dynamometers and, and appropriate uh, recording instrument. We also had a, a water basin, as we called it. It was an oval channel, about five foot wide, five foot deep. And at one, one, at one part, it, had, it, was one, <laughs> it was wider, and you could put <laughs> Step aside here for a moment. <laughs> it had, it, we could put in platforms, flat platforms, cover it with soil, and study the exiting of small scale vehicles from the water. And, and in order to create this current, there were two propellers which drove the water around. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> To my knowledge, this had never been used for anything, except when Dr. Alan Rees, whom you, you, most of you know about, and I will also talk about him a little bit, uh, he spent his sabbatical year at the Lambert Promotion Lab in 62, and he used it as a swimming pool. He, he turned on the <laughs> propellers and yeah, turned on the propellers. And, and swam against it. Luckily, there was a grate so that uh, if the current was too, too uh, swift, he was not chewed up by the propellers. <laughs> Other, otherwise, that, that unfortunately, that instrument or, or equipment was not used for anything else. We also had a, a standard soil mechanics yes. equipment, was this like a, 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 a shear box, which most of you know and what is called a triaxial machine. You, you know what a yeah. triaxial machine looks like? Yeah. There is a cylindrical soil sample encased in rubber hosing and surrounded by hydraulic water. Pressure is applied and also compression from top and bottom and then eventually the soil sample breaks and that's gives us good information about shear strength. Well, not on the backer, but later on when Scotty Liston was the boss, we discovered that these rubber hosings cost a lot. So if we ordered condoms and cut them <laughs> off at the end, then we, we, can, we can operate the same them. instrument much cheaper. So <laughs> Liston put in an order through the Detroit Arsenal Procurement Division for about 12 dozen <laughs> condoms. And I leave it to, to, to you to, to imagine what, what, 
kind of consternation that caused me. <laughs> <laughs>